Hi, welcome to the Catalyst Sessions again. My name is Bill DeYoung, and we're so glad you're here with us. Today, our guest is award-winning journalist and author Craig Pittman, who uh, was our guest, wow, late March. Uh, it's been yeah. uh, three and a half months, I think. Hi. Yeah, a lifetime. <laughs> so, uh, well, a couple of quick questions. Um, what, what, you know, how's life been treating you, I guess, is the obvious one. Um, three, three and a half months. I, I've been really busy. Uh, you know, I got laid off in, in mid-March by the Times after 30 years there. And very shortly afterwards, uh, folks from the Florida Phoenix, which is an online news organization based in Tallahassee, contacted me and said, we'd like you to write a weekly column for us on environmental issues. So uh -huh. I've been doing, you know, these weekly columns ever since then, plus freelancing for such up-and-coming young publications as the Washington Post and, and uh, Politico and uh, did a story for Flamingo Magazine that we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah. Um, and uh, and also doing a, a weekly podcast called Welcome to Florida. With, so you're, uh, busier than, you're, you're busier than you were before. I am. I am. I, you know, <laughs> used to be I could take a weekend off, but not anymore. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, Flor uh, 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 the Florida Phoenix, I was I almost yeah. called it the National Phoenix. But uh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> uh, tell me tell me about it, because I know it, it, it's similar to the Catalyst in that it's advertising free. And it's uh, but is it is it all political? I mean, you're uh, writing environmental stuff and sort yeah. of wacky Florida stuff too, right? Up there? Yeah, well, I did. I did one wacky Florida story uh, just because it was such a compelling story. Uh, Sweetie the alligator. Was, yeah, it was a guy. <laughs> there was a video that went viral of this guy who went up to an alligator that was lying on a sidewalk wearing a T-shirt, and he picked the alligator up, you know, like he would pick up a, a dog, and, you know, and and then kind of slung it over his shoulder and and walked into a florida key lime pie store with it and it was just such a florida thing was it, was and it, his, it, it went viral it, and people were like oh my god this is so bizarre and unusual and then i found the guy who was in the video and he said no no we do this every weekend <laughs> it's, it's a normal thing how florida is that? exactly exactly but, he's the alligator's the blind the alligator is blind it's about a five, yes six sweetie gator, sweetie maybe. the alligator is blind yeah and so she can't get around on her own so he she has to carry he has to carry her and he takes this alligator around to all the schools or he did while the schools were open yeah. uh to teach the kids about you know you know respect alligators but don't necessarily think they're all monsters and uh um, and he, he's friends with, actually grew up in Florida with the guy who owns the Key Lime Pie store. So he drops by there every weekend and brings Sweetie with him. And the customers love him. And they, they'll, actually, uh, they'll actually buy gator jerky while they're standing there petting, <laughs> petting Sweetie well, there, alligator. there's some kind of weird irony there, <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, exactly. Do you, do you feel like... Uh, so we, we end up having him as a guest on the, on the podcast, too. Oh, the alligator uh, guy. Yeah, the alligator guy. He was great. He had all kinds of facts about alligators. Plus, you know, he talked about, yeah, I carry the alligator around with me all over the place. Did you see <laughs> that thing with the, 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 the dinner alligator with my family. missing a couple of legs that turned up somewhere this week? Yeah, uh, yeah, it turned up on somebody's doorstep. I want to say in Naples or something like that, which no, I, um, it's do, like, do you feel like a magnet for these stories, Craig? I mean, do people kind of write to you and say, you'll never believe what I just read in the, the Two Egg Times? You well, know. it's, it's <laughs> what I love are, are when I get multiple people posting things on my Facebook page mm. that, and it's all the same thing. Like last week, it was the guy on a bicycle in the Keys who got into a bicycle accident because he got an iguana jammed up in his gears. You can't make <laughs> this stuff up, man. No, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, and, you know, well, Carl Hassan always says he doesn't make anything up. He just reads the paper. So... <laughs> <laughs> You'll be seeing that, I'm sure, in a future book. Again. So, uh, getting back for a second to, to the Florida Phoenix, though, it's uh, it's yeah. Tallahassee based, and uh, yes, and it's run by you're, a former, you're writing uh, environmental, I mean, person. straight environmental stuff up there because obviously it's a, a there's concern. a well, there's an environmental reporter, and then there and then there's me writing environmental columns, and we right. so we kind of coordinate. So I'm I'm not stepping on what she's doing, and vice versa. Uh, but it's 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 very liberating to be able to write it as a columnist as opposed yeah. to being a, a reporter. Cause I can throw in some of my own experiences. I can kind oh, of pick yeah. what I want to write about. I wrote one that was kind of personal to me about uh, uh, Jack Rudlow who runs the, uh, sure. uh, you know, that, um, he's sorry, in, I'm drawing a blank on the name right now. I haven't Panacea, had enough caffeine Florida? yet. Is that what yeah. Called? Up in Panacea. The, yeah, the oh, yeah, specimen. Great. 
Gus that's still Fessler around. That's great. You know, I think he's I read around. that actually. He's hanging on by his fingernails because of the pandemic, you know, because he's he counts on all the school groups coming through. I read it on Facebook. Like, I actually read that story. And, yeah, and there's and, no it's not happening. Well, no, no. So they're just they're they're kind of, you know, clinging to to the by the skin of their teeth. So that was a real personal one to me because my mom was a big fan of his books and steered me yeah. to them when I when I was old enough to read them. So, you know, to me, he's kind of a legendary uh, uh, Florida, uh, I don't want to say crank, but he's, you know, cause he's, you know, well, yeah, he, he's one of those guys that actually kind of got dragged away from the, from the lectern at a County commission meeting by a sheriff's deputy. So, you know, <laughs> Let us but he's a fascinating forget. guy. Mm -hmm. he's, he's an interesting, he's a classic Florida character. He really is. What I remember, you know, I think you said in that story that Jack's wife had passed away and, uh, yeah, and yeah, but I remember cancer. when I was, working at the Gainesville Sun, John Moran, the photographer and I went yeah. up there to do a story about Jack. And and my my it was fun. You know, there was a school group there. Yeah. I remember it was freezing cold. It must have been February or something. But what I remember was that his wife, Anne, uh, mm -hmm. was reading Michael Crichton's novel Jurassic Park, which pegs this as very early nineties. Yeah. And I saw it sitting on the table and started asking her about it. And she said, This is so cool. You know, it's t it's total rubbish, but it's just cool. Yeah. And this is a couple of years before the film came out. And so mm -hmm. thanks to Anne, you know, and I still, <laughs> I had some argument with somebody the other day about whether the book is better than the movie and usually is. And I think that one is too. Listen, if I'm not mistaken, my friend, you were born in Southern Alabama. Yeah, I was born in Pensacola, which at one point was actually the capital of Florida or at least West Florida. It was a joke, uh, Craig. I know. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, I know, it, you're um, Pensacola. <laughs> um, uh, it is true that that section of, of the state, there was some discussion about seceding from Florida and joining Alabama uh, <laughs> back in the early 80s, um, mm -hmm. led by a state representative who once tried to get out of a DUI by claiming he'd been bitten by a spider. Uh, <laughs> Tom <laughs> Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, we are, yeah. we are too weird. We are too weird for Alabama up in Pensacola. We are definitely part of Florida. <laughs> but, well, so Florida, I mean, you are a dyed in the wool Floridian, a, a, yeah. as am I. Where did your, where did your people come from? As it were, mine came from the Midwest, from Chicago. Um, I had a great uncle who was into genealogy and he actually tracked our family back to uh, the original Scotsman who arrived in North Carolina in the early 1800s. And then mm. eventually the family made their way down to Florida in, in 1850 to what is now Walton County, um, oh. apparently looking for a good deal on waterfront condos, I'm guessing. Uh, <laughs> and they, there's, a, there's an old family cemetery. I've only been there once. I, there's no way I could find it a second time. There's an old family cemetery up there near the Yellow River off the, and this will tell you how rural it is, off the Hog and Hominy Road. Oh, yeah. In Northern Walton oh, yeah. County. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and um, uh, you know the people buried there that were like Revolutionary War soldiers and yeah. folks like that. And the the thing that really blew my mind is that some of the gravestones, the names on it, were spelled out by somebody taking a big nail and hammering it in one one dot at a time to spell out the name of the person wow. who was buried there. Because you know, um, you know, pre-internet, everybody had lots of time, so <laughs> <laughs> they could do, well, they could spend time doing that. Uh, on the podcast that you and Chad Scott do, Welcome to Florida, yeah. I, I, you yeah. know, when he was doing his introduction of you on the first episode, he, he lobbed this extremely loaded question at you, which I'm lobbing now, which was, okay. uh, why do you love Florida? And then we're going to talk about COVID in a minute, but, but let's back up. Why, why do you love Florida so much? Oh my gosh, there's so much to love here. I mean, uh, number one, we have uh, some of the world's greatest beaches, frequently identified by Dr. Beach as number one. In Dr. fact, this Beach. year, this year's number one is Caladesi Island mm. uh, near Dunedin. Um, second, we have this award-winning state park system. Our state parks have won four national awards. No other state has anything close to that. Yeah. Uh, with just a variety of, of things to choose from uh you know we've got springs we've got the world's greatest collection of springs yeah. in florida we've got uh state forests we've got uh hiking trails rivers you can canoe or, or kayak on uh all kinds of bays and estuaries we get really interesting animals uh manatees or the spoonbills and so forth uh and of course we have the world's most interesting police log items um <laughs> including as somebody pointed out 
this weekend, the Times rounded up all of the, uh, a whole bunch of the mask related crime items from, from the Tampa Bay area over the past few months. And people were trying to figure out what was the most Florida item. And I think we finally settled on the one involving the guy wearing a flamingo shirt uh, who was in a, a, a drinking establishment and the clerk told him he needed a mask. And the guy said, no, I don't. And the clerk said, yes, you do. And I can sell you one. And the guy like leaned over the bar at him. So the, the bartender like hit him or threw a stool at him. And the guy picked up the stool and threw it back and hit the clerk with it. <laughs> so, Doesn't this stuff happen in other states though? I mean, why is Florida so insane? It must weird be the humidity. Things, weird things happen wherever you find people because people are weird. Let's, let's face it. It's just that more of this stuff happens in Florida and it tends to be weirder. Um, uh, you know, I think a lot of it is because we, we as a state underwent this wrenching demographic change. In, the in 1940, we were the least populated southern state, mm. you know, pre-air conditioning, pre-bug spray. Right. And now we're the third most populous state. We passed New York in 2014. And people aren't, you know, evenly spread over the whole peninsula. They're kind of crammed into that 30 mile wide swath along the coast and along I-4 where the theme parks are. So you cram that many people together in that small a space and they're bound to start ramming into each other's cars and chasing each other with machetes and arguing over whose dog pooped on whose lawn. And then you overlay that with a hundred million tourists coming every year. Wow. And you can see why, you know, we act kind of crazy. Plus we're out doing weird stuff all year long because the weather's good. You know, we're not trapped inside by, um, uh, you know, by blizzards like people in Ohio are, you know, for three months of the year. So so we're it's just out, essentially we're just it's, out it's, being it's, crazy it's and a breathing been nice yeah. is even in spite of the quarantine in spite of the pandemic people are still doing crazy stuff in florida so uh, well florida okay i mean let's let, let's 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 hit it i mean this week we you know we got a new a, a new high you know we're the most yes. covid Florida's infected, number one yay <laughs> covid infected state and you know yes. we're a small country um yeah. Dio Hughley had a funny joke. He said, hey, Florida, you're just uh, topped everybody in the number of coronavirus cases. What are you going to do now? I'm going to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, how do you process that? I mean, is that is that pure population? Is that pure idiocy, people on the beaches? I mean, how does one some process of it, that? Some of it is that in Florida, you tend to have, people tend to have this attitude of, uh, you know, you only live once, so I'm going to party, party, party. Um, you know, uh, nobody's going to stop me from having a good time. Remember in the 1980s, our tourism slogan was the rules are different here. Uh, mm. People tend to interpret that as there are no rules at all and no <laughs> consequences for our actions. And of course, that's very definitely not true. Um, wow. and, you know, we can kind of see that with, and this is, this is, I'm not saying this to be funny because this is actually really sad. Uh, yes. This county commissioner uh, up in, I think, St. John's County, who a week after he voted against requiring masks, he's in the hospital with COVID-19, you know, and, and apparently it's very serious. They're talking organ failure and stuff like that. Wow. So, you know, well, it's, it's, you know, sometimes the consequences are very dire for people in Florida who well, ignore guess, science and ignore gravity and ignore other things. So, I, you know, there's, um, I don't know. What, what do you say? Well, let me move on here. Maybe. Yeah. Cat it's tells like you watching Darwin though. in real time is what one person said. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. I've heard that too. Yeah. And there's other versions of that too. Cat Tail is your most recent book yes. uh, about saving the Florida Panther. And um, what was the response like to that? I mean, did, did, did the wildlife people sort of say, Oh, Craig, Hey, you're doing, you're doing a great job or uh, Craig, you made us look like idiots or uh, what kind of response did you get? Um, a lot of people have really told me they, they like, they like writing the book right now because they say it's a really good quarantine read because it's, oh, well, you know, there, there's all kinds of weird stuff that happens, interesting characters. It's been compared a little bit to Tiger King, although it, trust me, it's not like Tiger King. Um, uh, and then there's a hopeful ending, which I think is what people really respond to, um, right. you know, because people need, need a little bit of hope right now. Um, there's been some controversy. Uh, there's one character in the book, uh, a guy named Dave Mayer, who starts out as like a big supporter of Panthers, a big champion of Panthers, and then goes to work for developers destroying Panther habitat. And mm. he's got a lot of fans out there who uh, are not happy with the way I depicted him. And all I can say is, you know, I, I read through the guy's personnel files. Um, I read his book. I read everything he wrote 
uh, read every interview he gave, talked to the co-authors of his scientific papers, talked to people who work with him, and you know what I put out there is what I found, and I think I did my best to be fair to the guy. That, uh, that's you know, all you it, can do. I yeah, mean, I had he's, a, I had he's a little dead, controversy so earlier yeah. this year with Skyway. I mean, somebody who wasn't interviewed for the book because I didn't know they existed kind of right. took how issue do you do with that? me. And yeah, what can, how do you? Yeah, if if, if, if there aren't in the records, how do you know they exist? Yeah, you know. That's, that's exactly yeah. right. And, and I, well, it's, it's, that's a story for another time. Uh, yeah. But the one you're working on now, and you mentioned this before, it's called The State You're In, Florida Men, Florida Women, and Other Wildlife. Is, yeah. is, is this sort of a follow-up to O Florida, or, or what are we looking well, at? Well, not directly. It's, a, it's just a collection of my columns and, and stories over the years, some of the ones, some of the ones that were my favorites, some, uh, some serious, some funny. Uh, there's, this, there's the column I wrote about the woman at the villages who got arrested for shoplifting while dressed as a turkey. Um, and, yeah, and it was, this was in November. And so I called her up and said, why were you dressed as a turkey? And she said, it's Thanksgiving. Like, you know, well, <laughs> yeah, of well, of course. Didn't you? <laughs> you know, yeah. every, doesn't everyone dress up as a turkey for Thanksgiving? Right. <laughs> uh, uh, there was a column about the uh, Florida's mermaid industry. You know, we have a whole industry of women who dress up and a few men who dress up as mermaids it's not just at wiki Wachi state park it's they're really? there from the panhandle down to the keys yeah so i interviewed a bunch of them about you know uh so why I did they not do it. know well, that i, I mean yeah I'm, I'm, of course familiar with the whole like lineage of wiki Wachi. Uh, right which why, by the why? way florida is the only state where mermaids are on the state payroll uh as <laughs> they're part of the state park attraction there what, um what, 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 i gotta stop you there though okay. where, where are these other people doing you know fins they're, mermaid they're all over i mean there's some in pensacola there's doing what the what swimming pools what are they doing well there's one uh one of my favorites is a woman named medju sirena who bills herself as the fire breathing mermaid and of she course. lead she leads a group of, of mermaids who perform at the rec bar in fort lauderdale they put on a show you know it's one of those bars that has portholes behind the bar that They're look in into tank. a swimming pool and they and they swim around and appear in the portholes and entertain the, the customers there with a, like a little burlesque show and and uh she's in her 40s and she said you know thank god things float in the water so <laughs> oh <my God>. oh <laughs> but she wow. was great she's very thoughtful she had had a background in dance and gymnastics and she said that's and her interest in biology in marine biology is what sort of led her to become a, a mermaid to dress up as oh, a mermaid. Of course. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to study fish, and then you know what? I'm putting and the then fins be one. On. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Isn't but it I mean, kind of like the Incredible Mr. Limpet or something? You know. Well, you know, it, think. <laughs> is there anything in the world that would make you want to pull on a 60 pound prosthetic silicone tail? Nothing. And and hold your breath for like five minutes at a time while you're swimming around underwater and waving at the tourists. Well, I can't. There, uh, uh, Lou Vickers, are, I guess, is is the lady who wrote that, that yes. marvelous book about Wiki yes. Watchy and, and Newt Perry, yes. you know, the guy who founded it. The and, guy who founded it, yeah, and hired all these nubile young women to dress up and perform for the tourists. Fascinating and, stuff. And uh, yeah, and I mean, this is it's just such a Florida thing. But the, a lot of them say, well, there was one woman. She was actually interviewed by the New York Times, who said, you know, I quit for like a year, and finally, I just had to admit, I'm a mermaid. I can't help it. And so she came back. It's just there's something within wow. them that calls them to 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 do this as, as a as a for a living you know you and, know i think somebody needs to write a biography of maybe it's you maybe it's me is um is rico browning you know who was, oh, yeah. was one of the original yes. wakula springs uh, divers but of course right. creature from the black lagoon creature from the black lagoon and he's still alive i know and he he created flipper he was yes. the one that did that whole like which started as a couple of really cheesy family yeah. films and then became a really cheesy tv <laughs> series but yeah, and Rico's still around, man, and that guy. He did a, he did a great stories. interview with, uh, I want to say the Orlando Sentinel or the Gainesville Sun a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. where he confessed that it was it was actually very cold while they were filming Creature from the Black Lagoon. So whenever he would go into the water to do the the underwater swimming sequences, yeah, it would be he'd be chilled to the bone. And so when he came out, the crew would give him some some whiskey to warm him up. And he said, after about eight or nine shots, he said, I was, I was a very drunk creature. In the oh, that's <laughs> that's good. See, this, this guy's got to have a million stories and that kind of history just fascinates me. And yeah. And, and Lou's book is cool. And yeah, I knew Rico was still around. I got to know, um, oh my gosh, Rico Berry, who trained the dolphins oh, yeah. 
yes. at, the, at the Sea Aquarium. And, it's, and it has been for, all, for 50 years now, one of the greatest, uh, you know, advocates for, uh, you know, not keeping right. dolphins in captivity. Is, what, is in, isn't he in Blackfish? Isn't he in the documentary? Blackfish? Yeah, he's one of the central. Yeah. No, I think he's in Blackfish, but he's also in The Cove, the that's one the about one the thinking. dolphin slaughter in yes. Japan. I'm sorry, that's the one I was thinking of. He yes. was principal in that mm -hmm. one. And, and Rick's yeah. a, just a marvelous guy. But the stories of, of how Florida kind of came around uh, early, if you, if you look at it, like I'm doing a piece on what was called the Johns Pass Aquarium, which mm -hmm. was basically a, a big fishbowl with a bottlenose right. dolphin. It was, it was nine feet deep. Ouch. I went up there when I was a little kid. And, and to see how people have come around, you know, yeah. and I, I guess it was natural, but if you look at photos of the old days, I mean, animal well, abuse was the I mean, way it was. Why that's why snooty was smaller than he was supposed to be when yeah. he died is because he for so long he was in a tank that was too small for him so when snooty died this this is what started my interest in all that so yeah. i may end up writing something about that so the yeah. book is coming out through university press of florida do we have a trajectory what when uh sometime in 2021 i don't know exactly when okay uh what else do i have in my notes here tell me about the podcast uh oh. that's in my uh, notes but i, I want to ask you anyway I can't take credit for coming up with the idea. I've, all, I've wanted to do a podcast for a while. I actually pitched the idea at the times and we got to the point of actually recording one and then it all kind of went away for some As reason. They tend um, to do, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and so uh, Chad read Cattail and loved the book and started following me on Twitter and liked the stuff I was posting on Twitter. I'm at Craig Times if you want to follow me. Um, and so he, uh, contacted me out of the blue and said, listen, you don't know me. I'm a radio guy. I know about podcasting. I have access to the technology needed to do podcasting. I'd love to do a podcast with you about Florida. What do you say? And I said, great. I have this proposal I wrote up when I was at the Times three it's years ago. The drawer, yeah. Let me, yeah, let me revamp it and I'll send it to you along with some yeah. proposed uh, topics. And, and my suggestion was we call it Welcome to Florida and we aim it particularly, I mean, anybody can listen to it, but we're particularly our goal is to educate the 800 to 900 new people who move into Florida every day about the place that they now live. And so, yeah. you know, we're trying to teach, we, we, you know, we, we've done pieces on uh, alligators. We did one on Florida civil rights history and interviewed the woman who literally wrote the book on American beach. Um, who, by the way, is great. We had a great time gossiping about Zora Neale Hurston's second marriage. Um, <laughs> She was There's 48. Always those little side trips you go on. She yeah. was 48, and she married a guy who was 23, who later wow. accused her of using voodoo on him. Um, <laughs> okay. um, oh, that's uh, we Zora. did we, yeah. we did one on python hunting, where we interviewed a python hunter who um, uh, actually sometimes cooks the pythons that she catches. Uh, her liver and onions recipe apparently is to die for. Um, <laughs> and. And uh, the one we've got running uh, Thursday is an interview with a guy who wrote a book on the villages and what an interesting and unusual place that is. It's the only place I, I've ever heard of in Florida where they arrested people for running a golf cart chop shop. <laughs> what, what, you know what? Educate me here, Craig. What's the deal with the villages? How long has it been there and how many people live there? It seemed, uh, you know, it's, see, it's got this kind of like old people Stepford reputation. I don't it's know the, anything about it. It is the largest over 55 gated retirement community in the world. Uh, it's huge. It sprawls across three counties in Florida and is big enough that it's sort of taken the political power away from uh, at least one of those counties and, and recentered it in the villages with the voters there. Um, they, uh, they consume an awful lot of water, uh, so much so that they frequently have problems with sinkholes. Uh, the developer owns the bank, the, uh, um, the, basically he owns everything, including the local newspaper. And a guy who used to work at the paper told me that they were not allowed to do, to mention two things, anything complimentary about Barack Obama, and anything about sinkholes. Those are completely wow. off limits. Wow. Um, there are historical Is it not that way anymore? I mean, you, you can know it's still sinkholes. that way. There, there's, there are historical plaques all over the place, uh, you know, talking about the, the history of the place. They're all completely bogus. The developer made up all the stories on the plaques. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. Everybody gets around in a golf cart because there's, there's really nothing they need that's outside the gates. Everything's inside. You know, there's, they got their own grocery stores and everything like that, doctor's offices. 
um, and uh, and people will soup up their golf carts so that they look like you know fire trucks complete with a little toy Dalmatian or BMWs or Rolls Royces or you know you name it and um, they actually hold the Guinness Book of World Records record for the longest golf cart parade. Um, they are uh, they I think it's ninety six percent white. They were uh, Trump's firewall basically for winning Florida. Uh, uh, as yeah. opposed to the huge Hispanic population in Central Florida that was supposed to swing the state Democratic, uh, there were so many very, very active, very vocal voters in the villages who went Republican that it swung the state into his column. You know, by a narrow margin, but it was enough. Now there are people in the villages who are very anti-Trump, and there was a huge clash there between the pro and anti-Trump forces on Trump's birthday, uh, which led to somebody filmed the the uh the clash and uh the tweet about that made its way onto the president's own twitter account which featured a guy in a golf cart a pro trump guy yelling white power and so that became a huge controversy apparently according to the washington post he posted it and then went out golfing and put his phone down for three hours the white house couldn't get in touch with him to, to tell him to take the tweet down for a while um, <laughs> Uh, is that 2020 in a nutshell or not? Um, and so, uh, so, so, uh, so the villagers was in the news. So we figured, well, let's talk to a guy who has a real strong back. He, you know, literally wrote the book on the villages and we got him to talk about, uh, you know, not just the politics of it and the, the lack of diversity, but also about, um, their reputation for, uh, being, having a thriving Viagra black market. And in particular, a guy who was uh, quite a hit with the ladies there whose nickname was Mr. Midnight. Or rather, or rather part of him was nicknamed Mr. Midnight. Let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> it never ends. It's a bottomless no. well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, I nominated it as the weirdest, you know, the weirdest uh, settlement in Florida, I guess. Pasco County is my nominee for the ground zero for weirdness in Florida, but but um, but the villages produces an awful lot of weird on for it. all our friends in Pasco who are tuning in today. Yes, it's yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Pas. I can I can defend it. I'm glad to defend it. Pasco. You know, not only has the usual Florida mix of uh, you know uh, questionable politicians, one of whom, by the way, got arrested by the SWAT team <laughs> and shot back at them. The mayor of Port Ritchie, you may recall. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> got arrested for practicing medicine without a license and they sent the SWAT team in to get him and he shot back at them and uh and is now claiming stand your ground uh, <laughs> oh my god uh, and then his successor got arrested as well um 20 days later and then uh so you've got that usual mix of shady politicians and and uh hustling developers and so forth but also you've got um there there was a story about uh, the Klan tried to adopt a highway in Pasco County. And when people objected, they're like, no, no, we won't wear our sheets. We'll wear the orange vests. It'll be okay. <laughs> um, the mafia actually had a place there, King's Court, uh, which uh, shows up in the in the book version of Donnie Brasco. I don't remember if it's in the movie or not. Um, uh, and uh, at one point, uh, there was a colony of Wiccans who actually had a shootout with their neighbors because their neighbors thought they were Satan worshipers. <laughs> you, can, you can have all a series of books. I'm not telling you, you yeah. know, I mean, you already written like six well, that's, or eight books. That's why, I do a week, that's why I do a weekly author newsletter because there's always at least five more old Florida stories to tell. Well, let's, let's, get the, let's get the specifics out. We're almost out of time here. Where can one listen to Welcome to Florida, the podcast? Oh, it's on, it's on Apple. It's on Spotify. It's on all of the, all of the regular places you, you would find a podcast. And so, it's called Welcome uh, to Florida. And, and for now, it's free. So, you know, go and tune in, subscribe, rate it, all that kind of jazz. And, and, and uh, Florida Phoenix News has, has a website. Obviously. Yes, they're an online news organization. So floridaphoenix.com. And I you have craigpittman.com? find out about Craig your books. Com is my is my uh personal website to promote my books and uh and it links up to my twitter account which is at craig times um and um i think that's it okay well i want to ask you one more question as, as yes. we duck out here yes D do you miss the times do you miss the daily newspaper grind at all i'm i'm i miss i miss two things about the times one is i miss all of my great co-workers i miss being in the newsroom with people who are smart and funny 
and uh, at least a little bit snarky, uh, and sometimes would bring me donuts. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I really miss yes. that, and I'm, I, I miss that camaraderie there. Uh, I miss listening in on their phone calls too, by the way, which was a great, was one of oh, the yeah. greatest times of my oh, life was sitting, sit, I used to sit across from Mark Puente, who would get into these, these very, uh, very fascinating conversations with people who were not happy about him poking his nose into, into their their uh, spending of tax money. Um, oh, and, oh, sure. E eavesdropping and, uh, is one of the great thrills yeah, in the newsroom. Yeah. yeah, great. It's great. Him and him and uh, uh, Megan Reeves, who uh, is a sort of a take no prisoners interviewer with some of the people she talked to. Too. Um, well, and I'm sure they were listening to you, you know, probably well, cackling you know, with delight. Like, you know, when I would call people up and ask them about alligator sex, yeah, they might have listened in a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, and, and the other thing I miss as a, con as a consumer is I miss going out and picking up the newspaper out of my driveway every, every day of the week. You know, now that they're only printing two days a week, yeah. I had withdrawal symptoms. I'm, you know, I'm reading it online, but it's just not the same experience. It's just no, not. It's not. You, you miss the serendipity of it. You know, you miss it opening the page and going, Oh, I would have never known about that, but there's this little item about this interesting thing going on. You know, it's fascinating you know, to me too. I've been doing a lot of these, uh, you know, vintage St. Pete history stories as we were talking mm -hmm. about it. It's fascinating for me to go, I, I work through newspapers.com to look at the times from yeah. the 30s and the 40s. It was huge. And not only was the broadsheet huge, but there was so much stuff in it, every yeah. page, every day. And it makes you think, well, yeah, times really have changed. Craig, we're out of time. And okay. I, I want to express again my gratitude for you coming on here today. It's great to my check pleasure. in with you. I enjoyed and, it. Uh, Always we'll great be to checking talk to you. Out, we'll be checking out all your stuff, man. Okay. All right. Take Thanks, care. Thanks, Chief. See have you again. Great night.